If you try and live a completely stress-free life, um, you're really not living very much. Um, stress is part of life. There also, though, can be more good stress here, uh, e exemplified by this predator. Bad, it's not so good stress as when you're the prey, right? And it turns out that these elicit different kinds of stress responses. So in this model, and this is developed um, in part by Wendy Mendez, who is another faculty member here, um, the kind of positive thing is uh, uh, stress is uh, associated with approach or, or activated stress. It has elements of toughness and resilience. The, uh, the other kind of bad stress is more of a withdrawal inhibited kind of stress. And it is more of a kind of defeat kind of response to stress. So um, what, stre what, what influences this? Well, so what kind of stress response you get depends on how you're appraising this. And this is, again, something that's happening in your mind, right? So if you appraise a stressful situation like that animal of prey as a threat in which the demands may increase, ex in exceed what your resources are, you get a set of stress responses that include constriction of your blood vessels in your, in your periphery. So you get increased total peripheral resistance. That is probably a protective response if you might get wounded. A challenge response, though, is more what you want. For example, if you're going to be a sprinter and you're in the Olympics and you want to go out there and you want to do your very best, you get an increase in your cardiac efficiency. So one of the ways we measure that is an increase in cardiac output. So it turns out in the lab, during this tree or social stress test, we can actually measure those responses. We put a whole bunch of monitors on people, and we get measures of these two different things, increases in cardiac output or decreases, and increases or decrease in your peripheral resistance. So that's the, again, the, we, are you clamping down your blood vessels? So here's what this looks like in our SHINE study. So I'm going to walk you through this. So um, in the green group here, this is our control group. The red group here, that is our, the group that got the mindfulness enhancements. And if you look here, this is the change in total peripheral resistance starting from baseline from the first measure. This is a second tree or social stress test after people have gotten all the training. And you can see here, on the second trier, there is a decrease in total peripheral resistance, so less of this threat response, whereas the other group is actually getting, the control group is getting more response, potentially because they actually know what they're in for and they're getting a little more tense. In contrast with cardiac output, again, this is the challenge physiologic response. The mindfulness enhanced group is having an increase in cardiac output. The control group is getting a decrease. So these are all statistically significant differences. So what it's suggesting here is, if you remember looking at MBSR, the prior study, we didn't see a, response, a, a big improvement or change in cortisol levels. We, I'm not showing you the data here, but we got exactly the same kind of finding, no difference in cortisol effects. But we did see is this effect on the autonomic nervous system. And this is really significant because this immediate stress response is one of the ones that happens just right away. And it suggests that this is being affected by what's happening, what you're learning with these mindfulness skills. And it's helping people shift in this kind of stress condition, a job talk, for example, from this threat response, which is probably less desirable, to a response that would be more desirable for most people, which is, this is a challenge. I'm going to bring my best to it.